Welcome to Schofield Farm. I want to talk to you today about fall, fall gardens specifically, because I felt like I was too busy this year to grow a fall garden, but I changed my mind. And so I want to tell you why I made that decision. And I want to tell you what I'm going to include in my fall garden. These are like my must grows. Even in a year that things are so, so crazy, I don't think I have actually time to do a cooler weather type of garden. I am in the car today because this is one of those days that I have stuff all over the place. We have seven kids. We live in Northern California. We homestead in our little, what we call a family farm, Schofield Farm. We have three and a half acres. We have chickens, bees, a large garden, lots of young fruit trees, but we also have a lot going on in life and fall tends to be one of our busiest times of the year. My husband coaches three soccer teams. I think we have like five different, six, seven, I think seven soccer teams between our five boys. And one of them doesn't even live here. He's down at college in Southern California, but he does have a soccer team. We have dance for my girls and it is just so many dance classes. That's one of the benefits of homeschooling is we can do all of those stuff. I totally don't want to be misleading to you either. When I say fall garden, I always feel a little bit like a fraud because we really grow more of a cool weather garden. We live in zone 9B, we can garden year round and our cool weather garden is more like late fall, winter, early spring. It's so hot here in the falls, you know, often we're not even planting out things until November because it's just way too hot. So it's the start of September. I have not started seeds yet. I actually did not film for you. All the time I spent yesterday trying to sort through my seeds and decide what in the world was I actually going to include in my garden this cooler weather garden coming up because it's been really crazy this year for me to garden and I have not been able to devote as much to it as I would like to because of physical issues. I had shoulder surgery. I had some intense back issues I'm going to physical therapy for now. But all that to say, I need something low maintenance. I need something that just has the absolute essentials that I really want to be able to eat during the cooler weather. And so I narrowed things down a lot last night and it took me hours, but I think I have a pretty concise list to share with you today of what I'm actually going to include in my garden during a year when gardening has actually been really hard, discouraging, and I just almost didn't do a fall garden at all. I'm meeting someone for coffee. We pastor a small local church and I love encouraging people in their walks with the Lord. I also have to run an errand to take a bunch of sage to my cousin's house. She's giving me a blueberry clamshell to start my onions, talking about my fall garden starts. I love to broadcast sow them in a little clamshell from the grocery store and I don't have any. I thought I saved some, apparently I didn't, but I'm gonna give her a huge bag of sage. I'm gonna show you because my sage is out of control and someone besides me has got to use this stuff. Okay, we'll get back to the fall starts in a second. I love what I do. I love meeting with people now. I'm gonna take this to my cousin, get the clamshell to start my onions. And yeah, I'm excited to share with you my 10 must grows for my fall garden, my cooler weather garden. I had to limit it to 10 because I am trying to simplify. I'm trying to make this easier on myself. It's been a really hard year keeping up in the garden, a really, really hard year with physical issues. So I'm trying to make it simple and just do my very, very must grows. Now, the nice thing about a fall garden in our area is the fall, winter, spring is the only time that we get rain. We get cold rain in our area. We do not get warm summer rains. We have to completely irrigate our garden in the summer. 
And so that's expensive. That's a lot of work to make sure there's no breaks. If something doesn't get water, it dies. We have, I think it says it's like 102 right now. Start of September, that's pretty normal for our area. So to have a garden where the rain waters it for me, things grow kind of slower. They're not as high maintenance on pests or weeds. It is, it's why I convinced myself to go ahead and to start a garden and to pick which seeds I'm gonna plant because it's so much easier than summer gardens. I love the food from the summer. I love cucumbers and peppers, eggplant, tomatoes, but it's just so much less maintenance to grow something in the cooler seasons. By the way, if you're like me and are debating about fall gardening, have been a little overwhelmed this year, could you like the like button for me? It's good to know that I am not alone in this being a hard gardening year. I'd love to have a comment and let me know, are you gonna grow a fall garden? Or are you gonna hold off this year? All right, time to take all this sage to my cousin. And you know, I think it's always crazy that the easiest garden for me Time to start seeds is during the craziest time and if I didn't already have all the seeds and if it wasn't so much more economical for my family I would just buy starts and so if you're thinking about doing a fall garden and it feels too crazy to start seeds consider buying starts at a local nursery or a local gardener who's selling their extras because it really is a good time of year to grow but it is a really hard time of year honestly to start stuff I just acknowledge that that's why I thought about not doing it I'm pushing through that feeling, but honestly, guys, it can be really overwhelming time of year for everybody. We all get that. So there is no guilt or shame in buying starts so that you can do a full garden. All right, got my clamshell to start my onions. So I bet you can guess what my first of my top 10 things to grow in the fall cooler season would be onions. I love growing onions. I've only grown onions for about five years, I think. Well, I guess I grew bunching onions before that for quite a few years, but the bulb onions, it's been about five years. I started with the little sets, which are like mini onions that I bought at a local nursery. But then a friend of mine told me that I should try to grow from seed, which sounded so intimidating to me, but it's really not that hard. I have a video I'll link in the description showing how easy it is to broad sow the seeds in like one of these with some seed starter. And then I have another video where I actually plant them out and that's also really easy. You can wiggle them free. They look kind of like wheatgrass and then you can just plant them, space them out. We love fresh onions. I mean, we love them. Some of my kids are already talking about wanting spring onions again. So that is one of the must grows, even if I decided to plant nothing else, onions made the list. And the next thing is very similar that made the list, which is garlic. We have grown garlic for, I wanna say close to a dozen years. It might be more like 10 or 11, but I'm hooked. We save our own garlic and we plant from that garlic and we do hard neck, we do soft neck. I added a new variety of soft neck last year that we saved to add to our types and it is one of the most rewarding things for us to grow. It is so, so flavorful when it's grown at home. It's so low maintenance. That and the onions are so low maintenance that if I grew nothing else over the fall and winter, those two were already a guarantee. Like my debating about planting something never included those two. Those two were for sure. By the way, do you like this style video where I kind of take you with me and we talk as I go about because I'm gonna do more YouTube videos and with the crazy schedule of fall, sometimes it's hard to figure out where to fit them in. So if you like this style where we talk about things in the garden, growing food, the kind of stuff we're doing, but it's kind of fit more into a normal day, let me know because I'm kind of thinking about what formats to do videos and I'd love to have your feedback. It really helps me out a lot. <laughs> And finally getting home from a very full day. The next one of my musgrows for the fall chose me. I did not choose it exactly. It's leeks. 
we have a permanent leak bed and that wasn't on purpose. I actually grew leaks one year and I didn't realize in our zone, they are a perennial and come back over and over again. They self sow. So my number three must grow for the fall are leeks because I literally don't have to do anything. They grow whether I want them there or not. All right, and the next one, number four, I'm gonna show you right here outside of the car by the front door. My number four must grow was an accident in this pot. Yep, you can guess it's lettuce. And this lettuce looks kind of like it's bolting because it came up on its own. I think when I was shaking out some shaft from seed, I had some actual seed blow out with the shaft into these pots. I don't complain because we've been having unseasonal lettuce, but lettuce grows the best in the cold months for us. We have winter salads, not a lot of summer salads because it's so hot here, lettuce bolts immediately here in the summer. But in the winter, it is wonderful, crisp, sweet, fresh. Last year, I think I grew like 170 heads of lettuce and we would actually pick from the outer leaves first. Sometimes we'd harvest the whole head, but lettuce are so low maintenance for me in the winter that I would say if there was nothing else I was gonna grow, that would be a must. That is my number four on my must grow for cool weather garden. I have so many varieties of lettuce. I had to narrow down. I think I'm gonna do like four varieties this year. I think I have maybe a dozen, but lettuce is so easy. As I said, we use it a lot. We love it. That's the only time of year that we can pick it ourselves and not have to buy it. So that's why I'm gonna do it. The next thing is another thing that's pretty easy that only grows here only when it's cold. That is cilantro. We love cilantro. It's such a bummer that it doesn't line up with our tomato and pepper season, but that's okay. We even use cilantro like chopped up in salads. We like it on tacos. You name it, we probably like it with cilantro. So that is my number five, must grow for fall. The next would be kale. I love kale. Kale, I could eat kale every day. One time a friend of mine, she had way too much kale. She gave me literally like a garbage bag full of kale and we ate all of it. We didn't even have to preserve any of it. We love kale salads, kales in smoothies, kale chips, kale in soups and stews, kale in my scrambled eggs, kale in quiche. Kale is super popular with our family, especially me. So I didn't have any kale that lived very well for my summer garden. And when I thought about it, honestly, this specific vegetable, kale, is why I decided I'm gonna actually grow a fall, cooler weather, winter garden, because trying to think of not having any kale in my garden for a full year was tragic. And so I would say that's one of my, if I grow nothing else, I'm gonna grow kale. And I got this new variety I wanted to try out because it's pretty. It's supposed to taste good too, so this is gonna happen this year, even if other things don't. So one of my favorite vegetables of all time since I was a very little girl was broccoli. And that was store-bought broccoli, guys. I had never tasted fresh from the garden broccoli until I was an adult. And it is like, if you like regular broccoli, you're gonna love homegrown broccoli. And if you don't like regular broccoli, you're gonna love homegrown broccoli. So I found this new variety. I bought it this summer. And when I thought about it, or maybe it was the spring, but I thought about that I wasn't gonna get a chance to grow this if I skipped on the fall garden. So my number six must grow for my fall garden. It gets a spot even in a hard year is broccoli. I don't always do well with broccoli. It's hit or miss with our weather. We will have, you know, it's just strange here. Like we do get to freezing, but we don't get like a hard freeze. So we can grow so many things. However, suddenly we'll have like a random 80, 85 degree day in February and it makes things like broccoli bolt that should be fine, right? So I can be disappointed with broccoli, but the flavor and the fact that it's like my favorite vegetable makes it worth making the list of I must try to grow this. It may not be a must success, but it's a must try. The next one, beets. I grew a love for beets as an adult. I did not grow up on beets. My mom was not a beet person. But when I you know, was introduced to actual beets and roasting them and juicing them and pickling them and all the things, I fell in love and I do them in these little multi-cell trays. I'll put a couple in and I'll transplant them really young. And I'm always excited when I get a beet harvest. So beets are pretty easy. Those are going to be in my garden for sure. Those are my number seven 
must grow fall winter veggie. Okay, apparently beets were number eight. We're gonna get to number nine. Number nine, cauliflower. I didn't even like cauliflower as a kid or really as an adult. We were in this, it was called Abundant Harvest. It was like a CSA kind of farm share thing that we did years and years ago. I mean, I'm talking about like 12 to 14 years ago and we'd get cauliflower in it and I had to figure out ways to like cauliflower because I never grew up with it. I didn't care for it, but now I love growing cauliflower and I love when it grows in my garden. It's similar to broccoli. It does not always succeed in our garden, but it's always a must try. So I would say cauliflower is my number nine of 10 must try in my cooler weather garden. We are nearing the end of my must grows. I cannot forget cabbage. This is just one variety that I tried last year I liked, but I really, really like sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is one of my favorite ferments. I'll put in the description below a link to a day of me making sauerkraut with my girls showing how easy it is. Our favorite recipe, sauerkraut is such a must in my family. My whole family likes it that I always have to grow cabbage. And I also grow Chinese cabbage because my kids love, love, love Chinese chicken salad, Asian chicken salad, whatever you call it, we love it. And I feel like we never quite get enough of it. So thinking about the fall and winter, thinking that we might not have fresh cabbage from the garden for those salads, for the sauerkraut, it really did tip the scales towards, yes, I'm going to grow a cooler weather garden because I really would miss these veggies if we didn't have them. And I have one bonus veggie at the end. It is Japanese giant red mustard. The reason it's a bonus veggie is I never sought to grow mustard. I never tasted mustard greens. I didn't know if I'd like mustard greens. I got a free package from Baker's Creek years ago and I decided I was gonna try it, see how it was and I loved it. We love it on sandwiches. We will harvest it young and put it in salads. I have put it in stir fries, put it in soups. Mustard is really, really good. And I was pleasantly surprised. It was one of those things, if I didn't get free seeds, I would have never tried it. I would have never had it on a must grow list. That's why it's a bonus because I didn't expect to like it so much, but those will be in my garden this year. And I am so glad you made it with me this far to the end. I hope this was helpful, maybe inspirational. If you are on the fence, if you're going to grow a fall, winter, cooler weather garden, Hopefully some of these things I love make you tip the scales to think, yeah, I'm gonna actually grow something this year. I would love to hear what your must grows are for a fall winter garden. What is your one thing you think you could not live without growing or you'd have to like buy it at a farmer's market from a local grower because you like it that much. And that's what I think all of these things are to me is if I didn't grow them, I'd have to figure out a source to have them fresh from somebody's garden. I will meet you in the comments below. I want to hear what you're growing and how has it been with you growing a cooler weather garden? Is it something stressful starting at this hot time of year or is it something that's restful because it's easier? Thank you and I'll see you really soon.